Hi, and welcome to today's Engaging for Missouri webinar. I'm Alice Roach from the Division of Applied Social Sciences at the University of Missouri, and I'll be your host today. With each of these 30-minute webinars, we intend to share research-based insights that leaders like you can apply in your own work to benefit and strengthen the state's agriculture and food system, hospitality sector, and communities. Today, Alan Spell will share an update of key economic measures as the state and businesses reopen. Before I invite Alan to begin, I want to share a few housekeeping notes. First, we'll close the webinar today with a question and answer session. Those of you who connected to today's webinar via your computer can submit your questions in the chat screen. So to open the chat, just click the chat button that you see at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you join today by phone, then you can email me your questions at roacham at missouri.edu. Second, all attendees are muted and may not start their video. Third, if you encounter any technical problems today during the webinar, then you can either let me know by submitting a comment in the chat screen, or you can also send me an email at roacham at missouri.edu, and I'll do my best to help you troubleshoot. Fourth, we will make a recording of today's webinar available to you. You can look for an email from Zoom that shares more about where you can access that recording sometime tomorrow. Additionally, you can also access a, an archive of all, of all of our previous Engaging for Missouri webinars on our division's YouTube channel. So now we'll transition to the topic of today's webinar, which is titled Missouri Economy Indicators, an update of key measures as the state reopens. Presenting is Alan Spell, who is an assistant extension professor of regional economic development. So thank you, Alan, for presenting today. If you could please unmute your microphone and start your video, then we can begin today's presentation. All right, thank you, Alice. Well, thank you for attending today, and I will, uh, I will cover a lot here in the next 20 minutes. So uh, a lot of charts that we'll uh, show, and I uh, hope you've had some coffee. It'll take a lot to get through, but uh, I do want to encourage you to download the uh, PDF or get the PDF after this because there's a lot of information that'll go fast. And so don't worry if you can't write it all down. So we're gonna uh, talk about economic indicators as current as we can. Um, given the situation that we have right now in our economy, uncertainty is, is the one word that describes it. Uh, the protection protocols, will they work to, to reduce cases? Is a vaccine coming? What about the federal spending that uh, Congress is looking at now to, to do again? All of this is causing uncertainties that are, that are obviously hurting uh, consumer demand and business demand. Uh, we, we know that GDP this year will go down. Uh, we don't know by how much, but the the, the estimates are from six to eight percent for the U.S. and the world. Now, and that's important from the world perspective. A lot of times when we have recessions, it may just be a handful of countries that are having uh, issues. Right now, it's a global challenge with almost all countries showing decline. And so that's a, that's a bigger impact that's going to mean that no, no matter how well uh, the United States does, we also have the, the world um, that's, that's going down the decline. And so that's going to impact us as well. What does 6% mean? Well, for Missouri, 6% in one year represents three years of GDP growth, real growth. So that's very impactful, and that's a large number. Um, so it's very important um, for our economy to understand this. So to help understand that, every couple of weeks we're putting out briefs. Uh, this is the 10th that we put out this past Monday around business openings. We started back in March to try to uh, put out uh, really easy to read two page briefs around some of the indicators that might be impacting workers in our industry. So let's first look at consumer spending. It's the largest part of our GDP, about two thirds of it. And right now consumer spending is uh, down for Missouri by about 4% as of uh, mid July. Now that estimate comes from a private data vendor affinity solutions who tracks credit card transactions. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's private sector data, not from federal sources. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the caveats with, with this data, but it is a very current uh, measure and used by a lot of sources. For the US, it was down 6%. So you can see from basically a January timeframe where we were at around normal, and again, these are seasonally adjusted figures, so they're gonna be adjusted for that seasonality. We saw the big drop in April, and then by June, by late June, we had uh, gone back up closer to those uh, January levels. Uh, back and forth a little bit, this is jumpy data, but we're seeing in July, those numbers go down a little bit, and that's um, largely due to the consumer confidence hit that we're seeing with uh, the, the increase of COVID uh, health concerns. 
Now, by industry, it differs. Uh, that 4% decline that we're seeing right now, that's that, uh, that middle bar there that you're seeing. Well, that's not every industry. Uh, grocery stores are doing better. They're 10% above their, um, their time in uh, January. Apparel and general merchandise stores, and think about your Walmarts and stuff like that that are doing a little bit better. Healthcare's down uh, 5%. Restaurants and hotel, 30. Uh, entertainment and rec, 47. And then transportation, 49. So we're seeing it differ obviously by industries. As we dive into some of the figures some more, you'll obviously see um, those impacts replicated in jobs and other things. So how are workers doing? Well, right now, unemployment insurance claims are, are, are just uh, at a level that we've never seen before. Um, 217,000 average continuing claims in the month of June, uh, but that's coming down. And there's, there's you know, some, uh, challenge in, in understanding the continuing claims because there's different uh, claimants now than we've had before. We've had some uh, gig economy workers that can now claim. We also have some challenges with, with the data uh, in terms of people being able, able to backdate some of this information. So it's a, it's a hard number to track down, but I did want to isolate it in regards to the last recession because I think that's really important. So I use the Bureau of Labor Statistics figures um, and you can see in 2009 uh, time period, where we were at in terms of our peak at around 120,000 average uh, claims in a week. Now um, we're at a much, much higher level. So of course we spiked really fast because we closed the economy down and we're starting to reopen. And we'll see some of those numbers here in a minute. But the question obviously is how fast will that unemployment go down? How fast will those claims go down? Uh, we're seeing now in the last couple of weeks some worries that this might uh, last longer than we had initially uh, thought about. Unemployment. Uh, for the state in June was um, was at 8%, just under 8%, compared to the U.S. at 11. So that was down from 10% in May. Um, and and you know, we track generally below the U.S. rate in a lot of, um, in a lot of our unemployment rate figures for, for a long time. So that's not an unusual trend. The uh, unemployment was mostly impacting or accommodations and food service workers, healthcare, and retail services. And you can think of healthcare, probably a lot of that is, is, is temporary with offices closing, ambulatory care offices closing, um, but they're, they're likely going to get that, uh, that employment back. These are specialized skills. They're gonna hire those people back as those offices reopen. Accommodations, food services, and retail are a little bit different story. We obviously saw a big uh, increase last month in jobs back in those industries. And I'll, sh I'll show you that here in a minute. But uh, you know, the question is, will this be a prolonged recession where um, those people uh, who are generally making less money, there's a lot of jobs in those sectors, but they're making less money, will they be impacted by shifts in our economy um, and, and unfortunately by a prolonged uh, COVID uh, health concern? So in June, last time we had data from uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics and our office, Merrick in uh, Missouri, we saw employment jump pretty substantially, 71,000 in a month. Now on average month, you know, in, in, in a regular business cycle, we're talking uh, 2,000 jobs or so a month. So this is really a tremendous um, uptick. In May, uh, in, in May and June, we gained back about 123,000 total jobs. In March and April, we had lost about 346. So that's about 36% of those jobs came back up. Now I've, broken it down, or I've shown you some information here by some of our largest employing sectors, and I think that's important. Healthcare is our largest employing sector, and as you can see at 415,000 jobs in uh, June, it was down slightly from the month before, so was government, uh, another large employment uh, industry. So those two pretty much unchanged uh, over that month. Professional and business services up a little bit, our third largest uh, employing industry. And then retail manufacturing and leisure and hospitality. Those had some substantial um, increases. Retail uh, up nearly 20,000, jumped down to leisure and hospitality up nearly 36,000. We're still down over the year, but you can see a lot of those retail and leisure and hospitality jobs coming back up in June. Now July numbers will be out in a, in a little bit here and a couple of weeks and then we'll get to see what, what's happening in July. These numbers are also subject to revisions. So um, a lot of the census and BLS data is really good, but it does get revised, and so just be wary of that. How are businesses doing? 
Well, one way to measure uh, this is, is a new survey that Census puts out now about every week that covers um, households and also businesses. This is some information from the business Pulse survey. The last data um, as of yesterday was for June 27th, so, the, so that week of the 21st through the 27th. We have um, a chart here where we're comparing Missouri versus the US, and you can see from April all the way to June that that idea of has your company felt a negative effect? Now that's a lot of, that's a, there's a lot of ways that you can feel a negative effect, but it's a good overall um, idea of, of how um, businesses are seeing this, um, this thing play out. So back in April, uh, nearly nine out of 10 uh, firms were feeling negative effects and that number's going down to about eight and 10 for Missouri. Uh, again, this will bear watching as, as we move forward. Also, to kind of go along with that, we see uh, declining revenue. Uh, they ask about revenue. Did it decline from the week prior? And as you can see, back in April and May, to the left there, about seven in 10 said our revenue declined from the week prior. Uh, that number has gotten better now at, at uh, the end of Ju June. We're at four out of 10 saying that their revenue had declined. Again, something to keep watching as we move forward. This is a large scale survey, so it's, uh, it's, it's a good overall idea of um, how businesses are doing. Recently, the Department of Revenue and a lot of agencies uh, have been putting out a lot more information uh, than in the past, which has been absolutely critical in this time of um, understanding our economy. So I really appreciate that. And Department of Revenue now has some monthly data on taxable sales. So this is reported by, comp you know, this is, this is it, money that's, that's sent to the state for revenue. Um, so it's a really uh, a good capture of what uh, sales are doing. This is as of April, so it's not as, um, you know, we're still waiting for information for the coming months, but this will be something that's updated uh, every month. So in April versus April of 2019, so over the year, uh, total taxable sales were down uh, almost 14%. Now you can see by some of the categories down there, um, leisure and hospitality, 80%, uh, food services, 46%, educational services, 82%. Now a lot of that's gonna be private sector uh, education services there. Retail, 1.2%. So down, not down retail as a whole, um, largely from April of 2019. You can kind of see some of those figures there, which is important because as we look at some other data here, um, it can show you some mixed stories and it's kind of hard to always take um, uh, to know what's exactly going on. And this is an example of that. So this is taxable sales, April again, down 14%, but by county. So um, just looking at the map, if you, if you scan down to the bottom there, you see in orange, all the way down to 46%, decline is the change in revenue, all the way up to almost 49% uh, increase from the year earlier. So you can see places hit hard, like Branson, like uh, the Lake of the Ozarks area, St. Louis, uh, Kansas City, um, Adairsville, uh, Kirksville up there in the north. So you can see places that were hit, a lot of the, the towns and tourism places that we uh, visit. Um, but you can also see some counties that did not have um, um, as big of, of loss of taxable sales in some of our rural areas. A lot of the north um, counties are kind of mixed, but uh, anyways, an interesting understanding of of how this stuff can differ um, across areas. This isn't inflation adjusted, but inflation was pretty minor um, over the year. So uh, it's, it's uh, the, the, the counties that are really light purple still could be uh, showing declines. And I also wanna just kind of say, this is taxable sales. Th this is not profits that, you know, what we got to understand is that there's cost increase for firms as well. So this isn't obviously the whole story, um, but it's part of the story. Eight out of 10 businesses are open. Uh, and that was as of the first week in July there, looking at data, again, from a private data source here. So this is not um, federal agencies, state agencies, this is from a private sector source. 83% of those um, uh, of Missouri businesses were open. Um, fewer uh, businesses were open in mid-April, um, obviously. Mid-April, we were down to 60% uh, or 70%, I'm sorry. Uh, but moving up closer to 90% uh, here more recently and then dropping down a little bit. Uh, and again, dropping down a little bit in early July, probably also related to the parallel in consumer spending dropping as well. 80% was the national average, uh, just for comparison. Uh, you can see professional and business services close to 100%, retail and transportation, uh, mostly retail, that's gonna be down around 84. 
Middle Eastern hospitality at 78. So companies were opening, uh, trying to get business, but of course sales is a different uh, story and, and set calls compared to that. Now for open businesses, and I wanna uh, really emphasize this is for open businesses, uh, revenue was down in January. With this measure, about 7% uh, for Missouri compared to 20% or 19% for the US, a pretty significant difference there. We look at, um, the, if we looked at that revenue in uh, late June, it was, it was a, around uh, the same level of January, seasonally adjusted, but then we've declined a little bit in early July, again, because of those uh, renewed concerns around COVID. So we see that, for example, retail and professional business services are, are tracking a little bit higher than January, actually retail doing um, a fair bit better, and leisure and hospitality firms um, still half of the sales that they had back then, health and education down as well. Now I want to stop here for just a second and uh, put some caveats to that. This is data from one firm who tracks uh, credit card transactions from, from uh, companies that, that use its business throughout the US. A lot of the data sources that we look, are, look at right now are real-time private sector data sources, um, but the reality is that they don't cover the full spectrum of all businesses. So for example, closed businesses aren't gonna be tracked here, and that's gonna, of course, affect total revenue changes. Um, the other thing is that this, these numbers jump around quite a bit um, because we're, we're trying to gauge things on a, you know, on a weekly basis. And unlike census data, BLS data, where there's been a long, long time of, of analyzing the data, analyzing some of the biases of the data and controlling for some of those things, some of this data is um, newer to a lot of us researchers and uh, still, you know, still uh, being understood. And so a lot of those caveats with that, just saying to, um, you know, to understand that this data will change and we're going to keep track of this to try to help you understand things. So a few uh, dives into some of the industries. How is manufacturing doing? Manufacturing jobs um, are down 6% over the year, but uh, had some pretty promising gains in June as uh, we showed on the prior slide there. So that's good. The Purchasing Managers Index, which largely uh, covers manufacturing, a national survey, there's also some regional and statewide surveys that are done. Um, if the number is 50 or above, that shows that in that um, manufacturing environment, and generally overall economic health tracks with this as well, that things are in a positive territory, expansionary territory. Things below 50 are sluggish or contracting the economy. So down um, at our, our little table there, we show that June uh, PMI was neutral around 50. So that's basically a neutral rating, but that's up from 42 in May. So definitely climbing up nationally tracks around the same, uh, but still a neutral number. I mean, we're not in any, any growth period really here, just more in a neutral um, point. And that kind of goes into that idea of, of a lot of concerns with business investment, with renewed uh, COVID uh, health concerns um, that could be dampening some of that. Missouri restaurants, just one figure that, that tracks uh, something is, uh, that's interesting is the open table um, information around seated uh, diners and restaurants. As we can see back in um, March, early March, when we were at about, you know, we're at normal, we went to basically nobody uh, from March to, to um, late May. And then moving back up to now, we're at about 66% decline from um, from normal levels, and as you can see in, in July, that's kind of tracking down a little bit when it spiked in June. And tourism, uh, tourism is a big thing to unpack. There's a lot of industries in that, but I do want to applaud the division of tourism for coming out monthly with indicators around the, the tourism economy. This is just one slide of many that they provide information on. They use a company, Tourism Economics, uh, to help understand this. But what I want to point to is really kind of the idea that you know revenue spending of 150 to 170 million um, a week is just not occurring in the economy according to these calculations here and you can see it obviously dropped almost to 90 percent down in april and now we're about halfway there so a lot of indicators tracking around lesion hospitality of around that 50 to 60 70 percent decline um, we're seeing things improve a lot of course it'll be real subject to, to how um, the economy and the COVID concerns are, are going to uh, occur moving ahead. The challenge right now is that this is the key time for tourism companies to, to make money in the summer. So this could really be a critical um, hit for them. All right, looking ahead, uncertainty is of course the, the word. Um, 
it's going to continue to impact consumer demand. We saw that even with lockdowns or, or uh, closing of, of the economy um, by government uh, entities, local and state, uh, that um, a lot of times consumer spending hit uh, or, or dropped before that. So really, consumers are reacting to the information about the, the health concerns, um, and they're responding, obviously, right now to that, um, as we've seen in the last week or so. Additional federal spending is being talked about, and I think that's going to go. You know, obviously, um, we've realized in the last two to three weeks that this is going to be a longer slog to recover than what we had hoped. And uh, so they're debating federal spending. Something will happen. We've got an election year coming, too, so there's no doubt something will happen. We just don't know what that will be exactly yet. And then last, uh, just a couple of points around the long-term economic uh, structural changes that are possible. One is e-commerce e is definitely um, going to increase. It was already increasing. That means distribution centers, that means logistics, um, and of course, small companies and how do they get into the e-commerce business. More remote work, not a sea change, but a, a, a fair amount of people being able to work remotely. And then what does that mean for, for downtown businesses and uh, especially uh, office rentals and uh, jobs that go along with that, um, cleaning agencies, protection, you know, security. A lot of lower income jobs that are supported in cities by people just living there and working there, that could be impacted. And then of course, the, the broader idea of moving to lower cost uh, cities and suburbs. Uh, there's already been analysis that people were moving out of the cities, millennials having kids and moving to the suburbs are kind of a longer trend that's, that's been repeated before. Um, that might be accelerated by that. So it might be an opportunity where you have broadband and stuff to attract um, people who can work there. All right, so we're running short of time, but I do have a couple of poll questions for you. So I hope you can answer uh, these questions. You only get to pick one. So is the, the top worry for you, loss of jobs and prospects for lower paid hospitality retail workers? And let's extend that to really anyone who has a, um, uh, a lower paid uh, job. There's plenty of them, but they're lower paid. Small businesses permanently closing. Um, there's obviously gonna be some companies that will come out of this. So is that a top concern? or just the longevity of this uh, economic uh, struggle that we're going through. So let me know which ones um, do you feel are the, the, the most worried to you. And we'll give you a minute here and then I'll tell you what we, what we found. Okay, so uh, about half of you indicated that the top issue was this um, struggling economy. Um, how long is this going to happen and how long is this going to go? And I, I, that, there's no right or wrong answer, obviously, um, but I think that that really does show the concern, especially more recently we've had of thinking that we might have, have found a way to get to reopen and to, to, to get moving on our economy and realizing that this is going to be a longer slog. So, okay, thank you for that. All right, let's go to the next uh, question. The last one here is, which of these indicators are most interesting uh, to you? Again, no right or wrong answer, but you only get to pick one. Uh, so tourism related industries are healthcare, manufacturing, urban or rural differences, industry differences, or just generally macroeconomic indicators like GDP, unemployment, um, bigger trends and stuff. So interested to hear what you have to say on that. All right, macro indicators um, was the top one by about half, followed by urban and rural uh, differences. So um, good, good to know that. It's, it's helpful and I know we've looked at some data, obviously today we looked at a lot of macro indicators and we've looked at some urban and rural differences um, in the past. And so we'll, we'll note that and keep trying to find some good data there. All right, well, the last slide before I, we turn to questions, just a very quick shout out to, to the agencies 
state agencies are just really putting out a lot more data and research than ever before. Thank you so much. It allows us to do um, the job we need to do for research and understand our economy. To all the data firms that are now providing free information to um, us to research this, and also to just all the universities and nonprofits and, um, and other entities that are doing some of this research, really is a time um, uh, of information uh, that, that is really critical to what we're doing. So I really appreciate everyone's uh, help in, in this effort and for you attending this um, session today. All right, Alice, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Alan. Um, we do have a couple of viewer questions. If you have a question that you'd like to submit, please feel free to do that either in the chat screen or you can email me at roachan at missouri.edu. So the first question, Alan, if you could go back in your slide deck to that map where you illustrate um, how unemployment varies by industry. Uh, this question is, or rather by county, um, this question is getting at um, the unemployment or the counties with the greatest share of unemployment. Is there a particular industry that's associated with the high unemployment in those counties? Yes, um, a lot to do with retail and, um, and restaurant and food services and accommodation. So those are, those are going to be why you see things like Taney County and Stone County there with Branson, Laclede down there. One thing to know about the unemployment rate is it's a combination of, of, uh, of surveys uh, of the population it's going to a lot of times track um, where you live as well. So sometimes you could be working in a, you know, you're living in a different county than you're working in. So you can imagine um, that has some impacts as well. St. Louis City, um, the very city uh, right there with people who were going downtown uh, and having, uh, you know, lunch during their work day. Uh, so they're not doing that. And so that's going to be a lot of your restaurant type workers. Great. Thank you. Um, you also discuss how tourism spending has changed. Uh, what are your thoughts on Missouri's $15 million program for promoting tourism and its potential impacts? Well, I, I'm glad to see it. I mean, one of the things that, you know, especially for rural areas and, uh, you know, in, in our cities too, St. Louis and Kansas City are big tourism places being right there on the edge of our um, economy. Uh, it is it is a um, industry that supports a lot of jobs. Uh, it is, uh, you know, Branson's known, Lake of the Ozarks known um, throughout the, the U.S. and Midwest. So really big um, areas of focus for us and jobs for people. Granted, a lot of the jobs aren't, aren't the highest paying jobs, but still jobs are jobs in a lot of these places and they're, and they're very well, um, uh, you know, very well part of the economy there. So I think um, efforts around that are, are, um, are a good thing. I know that, uh, you know, obviously travel, um, you know, travel and the, and the spread of COVID is, is, a, is a very big concern. Um, so it's, it's got to be done um, with, with a lot of smart things put in place. But um, I'm, I'm glad to see them addressing that. Great. Um, you described that 83% of Missouri small businesses were open in early July. What do we know about the 70 or rather 17% of the firms that were closed at that time? So are their closures more temporary or are some of them closing permanently? It, it's a combination. I think most were planning it to be temporary, um, and uh, and that's you know that was um, really the hope. But um, unfortunately, I think some of the these are going to be permanent. I, I think I heard the other day the international or, or the uh, the restaurant association predicting about one in ten restaurants would permanently close out of this. So if you can imagine, you know, restaurants now being you know eighty percent open, for example. Um, then uh, you know maybe we're not going to get back to that 100%. We're not get to 90% of those companies back. The uh, the you know a lot of smaller restaurants in particular just really don't have a lot of cash on hand to 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 um, weather you know three or four month decline. Um, and as we can see recently, it's gotten worse uh, with with the spread of um, COVID and the health concerns. So it really it really is a concern about will that 17% fully open and a lot of times those jobs are going to be in these service industries like restaurants, um, uh, like hotels. Retailers um, as well, um, retailers that are that are larger, like the Walmarts of the world, aren't, aren't going to go away, you know, they're going to be okay. But um, those companies are, are um, the smaller companies are going to be the ones that are really going to struggle, especially if they don't have an e-commerce presence. Sure. 
Uh, we have time for one last question. Uh, you mentioned movement to lower cost locations as a possible long term structural change for the US economy. So to what extent have consumers already started making permanent moves and what are they considering other than just cost of living when they do make those moves and like are they willing to move outside of the state where they're currently living, for example. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it's interesting because on the one hand, a lot of, you know, so a lot of the people who can work remotely are in the knowledge sector. So you think of of uh, uh, people typically with higher education degrees doing things that they can do from an office and can be anywhere. Um, and those type of people can pick up from San Francisco and move to Austin, Texas, for example. They can, they can pick up and move substantially across the country um, to a lower cost environment. Uh, but they still, a lot of times with the knowledge workers, still want to be close enough to a city where there's options for other jobs and there's also just other knowledge workers in their same industry. So, so you know, expecting uh, Google workers to go out to very small rural counties are, is probably not realistic. Um, the, but there, there is one, there's, there's already, already been some studies of, of the last half of, the, of this decade of people moving, starting to move out to the suburbs um, with, when, when they're having children and so forth. Uh, anyways, that's already started to happen a little bit. The suburbs are the natural place where, where we've done it for generations. We've moved out to lower cost living, yet we still have the restaurants, some of the things that we like to, to access right there. So that's going to probably continue and, and accelerate. Um, but it does bring this opportunity for knowledge workers to move out even farther locales. Um, and that's, again, going to really depend on fast and dependable internet speed, but also some cultural resources, some place of living um, resources, quality of life resources that they're going to also want to have too. So it's not just, it's not just broadband, but it's a combination of those things. Unfortunately, um, some people just can't do that. You're in our service industry. You're going to have to, to be where the, um, the work is. Sure. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Alan, and for sharing your presentation. And thank you to our audience, too. When you exit Zoom, you'll see a post-webinar survey will load in your browser. If you could please consider responding, we'll use the results to improve the webinar experience and also brainstorm future webinar topics. Again, you should receive a recorded copy of today's webinar via your email within about a day from now. And also within that email, you'll receive a link to where you can go and download the slides from today. So please join us for our next Engaging for Missouri webinar on Wednesday, August 12th. Um, at that time, Dr. John Cromarty, who is a geographer with the USDA's Economic Research Service, will share a presentation titled, New Privacy Measures for the 2020 Census, Potential Implications for ERS Research and USDA Rural Development Programs. So thanks again for joining us and have a great Wednesday. And thanks again, Alan. Thank you.